remember the days we lived down on the farm. On the farm. When the people laughed and joking meant no harm. Oh, meant no harm. The girls would dip their stuff, it's true. The boys would drink and smoke and chew. That's the way we used to live down on the farm. We had a big time. Like many soon-to-be performers and actors of his time, Frank's beginnings were humble at best. Born in 1908 in the small town of Black Creek, North Carolina, Frank's passion for performing was evident at a very early age. My grandfather was Frank Rice. He grew up on a small farm in Wilson County, and as was common in the early 1900s, they didn't have televisions, they didn't even have radios back then, but neighbors would come around and the, the children would, you know, listen to the adults playing different musical instruments. Frank was given his first musical instrument, an auto harp, when he was only five years old, and he learned how to play it so quickly that he moved on to several other musical instruments, including the guitar, ukulele, banjo, bass fiddle, and drums, just to name a few. Although he never learned how to read a single note of sheet music, Frank could play just about any song he heard by heart. He was just kind of a natural performer, even as a child, and he and his brothers would take the tobacco sheets from the tobacco beds after they were used and pretend as if they were making a show tent. And they would just put, put on little shows for each other or for their parents or whoever they could get to watch. And when he was seven, his parents took him to an actual circus. And uh, he just really loved, fell in love with the circus and performing in general. But the circus is where he heard the, the calliope sounds and the sounds of the animals as the circus parade came to town. And so the song, the circus parade, really was an evolution of his memory of what happened from that childhood memory. Frank's love for music continued as he grew older, and later he joined a band that played for local barn dances. As a young adult, he began to play around some of the local dances and, and happenings, and he actually joined a, one of the local groups that was called the Wood Choppers, and that's where he met Ernest Stokes that later became his brother-in-law. They married sisters, Ruby and Bess Horn. And as their friendship grew and their relationship and all got closer, they decided to form a, an act of, of their own, somewhat like a musical version of Abbott and Costello. In 1937, WGTM became the first radio station in Wilson, North Carolina, and the duo auditioned for manager Hal Wilson. They needed a name for their act, and they tried out several different things, and none of them really clicked with them. And one day they were at Dick's Hot Dog Stand, and the sign at Dick's Hot Dog Stand said, order your hot dogs with mustard and gravy. And that name kind of stuck with them, so they decided as their stage names, Ernest would be called Gravy and Frank would be called Mustard. The station opened on a Saturday with the 50-minute Mustard and Gravy show, and by Monday the pair had received so many requests to be played again, the manager hired them on full-time. So the radio show began to take off. It, it was very popular with the local community and, and as it got farther and farther. It became a syndicated radio show. And at the height of the show, it was actually broadcast on 111 stations around the country. And the remarkable thing about that is that at the time, there had only been a little over 700 licenses granted by the FCC for stations at all. So because of that popularity, lots of companies wanted to advertise their wares with the Mustard and Gravy show, and then other entertainers would come on the show to promote their 
shows, the movies, songs, what have you. And in the process is when they met Smiley Burnett and Tom Parker and other celebrities, Eddie Arnold. At the time, Smiley Burnett was an upcoming country music star and was in many western films alongside Gene Autry. Eddie Arnold, another country legend, was managed by the infamous Colonel Tom Parker and enjoyed a lucrative music and film career. So they became pretty good friends with Smiley Burnett and in 1946 he got them a position to do a couple of movies couple of parts in some movies with him. They went out and did Lone Hand Texan and West of Dodge City. And then they went back in 47 and did Bandits of El Dorado, also with Smiley Burnett and Charles Sterrett. And then in, in that same time frame, they also did Feud and Rhythm with Eddie Arnold. And now, Mustard and Gravy. So after they finished making those two movies, they came back to Wilson and they stopped their partnership then. They, the, the act kind of broke up and they kind of went their separate ways. And Uncle Ernest had his own radio show and my grandfather was on another station and had his own show. And, and it stayed that way for 10 or 15 years where my grandfather was a local radio celebrity. So Tom and Smiley and my granddaddy, they all stayed pretty close friends, although being across the country, you know, just correspondence over time and whenever one were in the area. So in 1955, a group that was touring with the Grand Ole Opry came to Wilson to perform at the Fleming Stadium. And my grandfather, being one of the local radio personalities, was the MC of the show. So that night, as in between the acts, everyone was down in the baseball dugout that wasn't on the stage at the time. And knowing that Tom Parker had expressed interest in one of the acts that happened to be touring with them that day, my grandfather scratched his name and telephone number down on a little pamphlet that, from the Gideons that he always carried with him and passed it off to this young gentleman. And shortly thereafter, that young fellow's career, let's say, took a turn for the better. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Throughout the 50s and 60s, Frank continued his musical career as a local radio personality. He even made yet another trip out to Hollywood to visit his old friends in the music business. In 1966, Smiley was on the East Coast promoting the television show Petticoat Junction, which he was a character on at the time. And he knew of a part that was being written that was to be a recurring part for Petticoat Junction and Green Acres. And he just, he could just picture my grandfather playing that part, which was to be called Dr. Knack the Quack. So he enticed my grandfather to come back to California with him to do that part. While he was out there, Elvis was filming the, the movie Spin Out. And so they were visiting on the set at the lunch break one, one day and the conversation came back up about the at, about the instance at that Fleming Stadium, and uh, someone made mention of the telephone number that my grandfather had given to Elvis, and Elvis stood up and took his wallet out of his back pocket and said, "You talking about this little thing right here?" 
and it was the same little Gideon pamphlet that my grandfather had given him 12 years earlier. Sadly, Frank's scheduled filming on a Petticoat Junction episode was canceled when Burnett died of leukemia early in 1968. He returned to Wilson, where he spent his remaining years quietly with his adoring family. And then he came back home and he was remained on the radio for another seven or eight years, I think maybe until 72 or 73. The song, The Circus Parade by Mustard and Gravy, it was um, inducted into or became part of the the National Library of Congress's records, and it was placed there during the bicentennial on the 4th of July of 1976. And then in 1991, he individually, Frank Rice, was inducted into the North Carolina Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Uh, to all the the old timers, all the people that just remember him as Mustard, he was just a, a jovial little guy, everybody, but he was just a lovable character. Some of the people remember him as in blackface, some people remember him as Dr. Knack the Quack, some people just remember him as good old Mr. Rice sitting around the round table in front of the fireplace at the clothing store for 25 years. But just about everyone in Wilson that's 50 years old or older just remembers Mr. Rice as Mustard. We had a big time. 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 Everybody would bring him a jug of sign and wine. And wine. I could have turned him out of him through with a little brown jug full of Mountain Dew. And we scout out the daddy's foot on the dog and have a big time. When I could have turned him out of him through with a little brown jug full of Mountain Dew. Mexican shuffle, the jitterbug, dip and ride. 